going on okay okay so this is kind of different ain't it it's a little bit different without having dad here and the inmates are running the asylum so welcome to the uncut panda podcast with uh mr cutthroat so it's gonna be a cutthroat panda show uh robbie how are you tonight my man great god i hate you sometimes so much (laughs) oh my god this is what happens when dad's not here i would have done it if he was here that's fair but for those of you who are wondering uh nick is actually going to be on location in atlanta for this weekend uh so robbie how was your week tell me what's going on man what how are you what 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 is today thursday of course yeah thursday yeah the shit runs together i've been podcasting all week dude we had uh we had uh matthew hayden uh, from uh from rugged pro wrestling that we just did the night before tuesday night yeah, I did another eFed related podcast last night, but you know that don't count. But uh, no, man, just living the life, working, uh, you know, recuperating from forty five hours of wrestling that I watched over the weekend from Saturday yeah. to to Monday. But it was all good, all fun. Hey, nothing wrong with that. And like you said, there was so much wrestling over the last week, and seeing the amount of people you know that were happy about cody unpleased about cody roman and brock the fact of the matter is is everybody's talking about wrestling and that's what's good to see we didn't have this five eight years ago when the business was kind of in a little bit of a a downfall so to see everybody interested again it doesn't matter what company you prefer the fact of the matter is is you love wrestling and welcome for even being here so suck it nick because i think i just did a better job hosting than you right there buddy uh (laughs) one question i wanted to ask you though monday night the monday night Night raw after uh wrestlemania uh cody opened up the show and I was really, really digging the the way that they're going about introducing him and why he came back. And I, that's the story a, a true wrestling fan can really get on board with, dude. I, I, I stoked, stoked. So first of all, where's your question? Uh, that was uh, quite- oh no, no, no. So what did you think? That's the, <laughs> the open ended question. Now, what did you think of that? Like- that's fair. Uh, first of all, man, Cody Rhodes, he just knows how to cut one hell of a promo that makes you think of his dad as he's cutting the promo. There's something about that Rhodes family where the believability is next level and kudos to Vince for not giving him a scripted bullet point type of promo and just letting Cody be Cody and speaking his mind. So it was, it was emotionally powerful. Cody knows how to get the point across and it makes you want to tune in for next week and to yeah. see since WrestleMania that Cody's uh, theme song is number two on iTunes' rock chart, that his t shirts are selling off the damn chart on WWE Shop and on Pro Wrestling T still, because he still has a Pro Wrestling T store right now, which surprises me. Yeah, yeah. But, but he like, also, he's as, as, as fi- on fire as he is, though, he's still getting a lot of heat from uh, especially a lot of the AEW diehards. I mean, but here's it's. I get their argument. Like, there's a lot of people that will always be upset, but that's the same people that should be upset about Daniel Bryan leaving or, you know, if Kenny Omega left or whatever it may be. I get it. You know, Cody yeah. was one of the people who helped found AEW. He's not the creator. He's one of the people who helped found AEW. I get there's a lot of attachment because of that, and people get very emotionally invested to the product, and they understand that. But you got to separate what's good for business and what's good for the human being as well. Cody going back to WWE was the best thing that wasn't just for him, but for his family and his legacy. He needed to go back there. And now, even if Roman Reigns steamrolls him, we'll always have that WrestleMania moment, which when he left six years ago was one of the things he bitched about. He never got his WrestleMania moment. So now he will forever have that. Yeah, absolutely, man. I can't wait to take that ride, man. Absolutely. I'm fully in. And speaking of that ride, Robbie, now I know we talked off air 
about how I was going to try to lead this one in, but seeing the amount of Christmas joy on your face off camera, yeah, I would like to form. I can't believe I'm doing this. I will probably regret this. Would you like to lead our guest in? Give it to me, Matt. The, Give the it power to me. is yours on this. You, you know what? I find I don't even feel bad about it. Nick has his guys on that he uh, gets all hot and heavy for it, dude. And he gets giddy as a schoolgirl. So I am too. Ladies and gentlemen, our, our uh, guest this week, uh, international wrestling star from WWF, but before that, championship wrestling from Florida, uh, Central States wrestling. Um, uh, the old UWF, not the Herb, not the Abrahams one, but uh, yep. but uh, Watts version. The Watts um, version, yep. WWF, of course, like I mentioned, the WCW, uh, known around the world as one of, like, I think, like one of the prominent baby faces, dude. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Mr. Sam Houston, let me tell you something, Daddy. If you're big star bound, it's a long, hard ride. And I'm going to take him with me. From now on, baby. Perhaps a topic drop coming up. Yes, he nailed it. Ladies and gentlemen, Sam Houston. Tales and exploits of Sam Houston and Dusty Rhodes. See my family <laughs> right across the sky on the edge of a lightning bolt. You know, <laughs> man, that did was that, awesome, dude. Thank you. Did that, idiot, did that video bring back some memories or it what? It sure did, boy. And I was jumping again all over the place. Yeah. Well, that I, video, I, that video, Matt, you want to tell, tell them where that video came from? That actually came from our good friend TJ Vegas, the host of the Indie Movement right there in the top corner. He makes all those videos for all our guests. He actually did that one very last minute for you. I think he – didn't he just do that today, Robbie? He just, oh, wow. he just got it to me today, and I just talked to him about He's He he needed the week off, but I told him he needed a video for Sam Houston, and he come through with it. So Wow, he did an awesome job. I want to talk to that guy. Dude, I, well, I think I can make that happen. And we'll I can get him in touch. Yeah, yeah, I can send cool. you that video too. I can send you that video alone so you can have it. But Yeah, yeah super, man. Yeah. So how's it going, guys? It's great to be back. Dude, you know, it, it's an honor to have you here, my friend. Absolute honor. And I know how excited Robbie is. And as we get into the questions, in honor of our host who's normally here with us to guide us, let me ask you a question to kind of start this off. Where, where was the moment where you realized you wanted to become a professional wrestler? Oh, gosh. You know, I was born into this business. Uh, I don't know. I, when I was four years old, I was I was writing my name on a piece of paper. And my grandmother come up to me. And she said, what are you doing, honey? And I said, I'm practicing my autograph. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I knew when I was in second grade, I, you know, I was destined for this business. When I was in second grade, uh, I started uh, working out. Uh, with a high school uh, wrestling team, uh, Catholic high coach, uh, coach Barrett down in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, Cause my friends that used to come watch me at the meets and stuff like that were Danny Hodge and Jim Shields and Herb Calvert, and, you know, just different uh, Mark Todd and AAU champions, you know, but I don't think Bob Roof ever came, but, um, but I, I had like, you know, le serious, legitimate amateur, wrestlers and they can teach high school kids a whole lot more than uh uh let's say an english teacher you know <laughs> that, that does it part-time you know but if you've got somebody that has had a aau championships and stuff like that to come down because one of your students or or whatever you know and this this was beneficial to that coach i guess Absolutely. you know so he let me work out with the high school boys so 
So when when did you uh when did you tell your dad that you wanted to be a pro wrestler and was his initial uh was his initial response to that positive or negative? Well, okay, here's the thing. You know, like I said, I was groomed for this business and everything, and my dad knew, you know, that I was going to break in. I'd been training all my life for it, you know, and uh, and he was sort of behind me. Then when I was 17, I had my tonsils taken out. And the, the uh, anesthesiologist, matter of fact, I had a conversation a while ago at the church about this. The anesthesiologist was the one that messed up during the surgery and nicked my pharynx. Well, that, uh, that, they lost me. I, I flatlined. I was dead for two minutes. Wow. Uh, I spent two weeks in a coma. Uh, they, they had nicked my pharynx and given me gas. And the gas had gotten into my head and chest cavity and uh, caused a major heart attack or a massive heart attack. I didn't eat food that year from April the 2nd to August the 13th. Oh, um, and then uh, I was able to uh, get uh, get some food down because the Superdome uh, the extravaganza was the next night, and I wasn't going to miss that. <laughs> but... Um, after, you know, in that hospital during that stay, I dropped down from 230 pounds to 128 pounds. I went from a 36 inch waist to a 20, uh, 27 inch waist. And uh, anyway, it took me a whole year to get my weight back up. And I went and George Weingroff, uh stretched me the first time. And then the second time he couldn't stretch me. And uh, he, George was the one that told my dad he's ready. And my dad came to me and said, no, I've already lost you once. You know, I don't want to lose you again. Uh -huh. So he said, this business is not for you, you know. Um, and well, anyway, uh, I Dusty, my dad had given Dusty his big break in 1969. So, you know, uh, you know well, there's a lot of tradition and with some people, I guess. But uh, Dusty called, told me to come down to Florida. And I just found out the uh, what few months back at the CACs, I was showing up at the shows. I wouldn't have a meeting in the office, but my dad had called all the, all the promoters and told them not to use me. I didn't know that. I just, really? that. and I was going to the events and stuff and I always had my gear. And finally, JJ said, why don't he said, give the kid a shot, you know? Right. So while you got, were, Oh, sorry. While you were in uh, the championship wrestling from Florida, uh, did you have any interactions with uh, a guest, a former guest of the show we had on, Bill Alfonso? He was a, a ref down there. Oh, yeah. Were, yeah. Were you that? Oh, God, yes. Okay. <laughs> and Bruce Thorpe, uh, uh, yeah, he's got something to do with the NWA. Anyway, Bruce Thorpe was just, uh, he was not just an announcer. I, I love Bruce to death. And I played a bad rib on him a long time ago. It wasn't, well, we were wrestling around. I was putting mashed potatoes in his hair. <laughs> anyway, I want one. to apologize for Bruce Thorpe. I'm sorry. I really, I, I want no ill will with you or nothing like that. We we're just two young kids messing yeah. around, and you know, I got the better end of it. I'm sorry. You live I, and learn. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, so we're driving back from Miami one night. Bruce Thorpe's in the back seat. Bill uh, Fonzie's driving, and I'm in the passenger seat. Wait, anyway, wait. We're drinking our beer and everything. Well, we're going through Alligator Alley. And there's a, like a 50-mile stretch from Miami over uh, west. And then you hit the Florida Turnpike and come back up north to Tampa. So, so during that 50-mile stretch, we run over an alligator. So, wow. You know, we pull over. <laughs> well, it's, it, we think it's dead. You know? Fonzie goes, I want me a pair of alligator skin, uh, alligator boots. <laughs> so we pick up this alligator and throw him in the trunk of the car. Get back oh, no. The car. Sounds We're like gonna... something out of a good fellas is about oh, to happen. It was, it was well, so anyway, we throw it in the trunk of the car. We're driving down the road, drinking, big, you know, well, you know how it is on the road. So we're drinking and having fun and listening to music. We get to almost to Tampa, and all and Bruce is in the middle of the across the back seat. And all of a sudden, there's a big thump, <laughs> and he jerks up like. And then again, another big thump. Well, then we realize that alligator ain't dead; <laughs> it's still alive. Oh, <laughs> uh, so uh, we get Fonzie lived in downtown Tampa. So we pull up to Fonzie's house because that's where our cars were. We're, we're leaving from there. 
Well, Fonzie pulls out. I think he had a 357. He pulls out a 357. He hits the trunk. Fonzie with a gun? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, this is scary. Thought. Anyway, but we all get over there, and Fonzie goes to shoot that gator. And then I grab his hand and I throw it up in the air, and he fires a shot. He goes, What the hell did you do that for? And I said, The gas tank is right underneath the alligator. <laughs> you oh. just saved everybody's life. Yeah. Yep. Oh. You know, so then I took my belt. We took my belt. We looped it around the gator's mouth, picked it up, put it on the ground. That's when Fonzie shot it. That's when we hauled ass. Uh, we found out the next morning, yeah, as soon as shots got fired, somebody called. And, yeah, Fonzie didn't get to keep the gator. <laughs> Poor Fonzie. going to have to talk yeah. to him about that oh, one. Yeah, yeah. He held out on us, Matt. Oh, yeah. yeah, he didn't tell us that one at all. When we were, and we've had him on a couple times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, we, we, had, we had a lot of fun down in Florida when I was, we were there. But, you know, uh, go ahead, go ahead. No, y'all go, yeah. I, so looking through your video there that TJ let us in with, Tell us one of the better stories that you have of you and Dusty. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. And don't worry. This is uncut. You can say whatever the hell you want in here. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, well, I know, but I don't like the. I don't like To a stuff. point, yes. <laughs> so, With class, of course. Anyway, so uh, I came up to the Carolinas. Uh, uh, Dusty sent me up here in January, and – you know, there were like five bookers and the whole nine yards. Well, Dusty had been in talks with Crockett and stuff for a while, and, and he knew he was coming up here. So, like, Dusty would come up, and uh, I'd give him a ride. Well, I know the business. I, I learned the business from the office first. You, you, you know, uh, like Jake says, when he got smartened up, he, he was on his way to the ring. I mean, For me, I was 11 years old. You know, saw something I didn't, shouldn't have seen, and then all of a sudden you got to explain it. So here's a bottle of wine, kid, and let's go down the road and this is what business is. Yeah. So, okay. <laughs> well, um, huh? Wisened up. Yeah. So, but it, anyway, um, I forgot what, we, what, the, what was the question. <laughs> Good dusty story. Oh, okay. So anyway, uh, 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 I knew the business. So whenever Dusty would fly in to work for Crockett, he, if I wasn't working, he would, uh, I would pick him up and drive him around to all the shots and tell him what's going on with all the different bookers and everything and what needs to work, you know, what needs to be worked on and this, this, that, and the other. So anyway, uh, so when they do the big thing with Barry and Rotundo coming in and, they, you know, they're put, giving everybody the big push. Well, uh, when I would, when I would pick Dusty up, I had a 77 Buick. I'd get to drop my car off at the office and drive. So I go to uh, meet him at, after interviews and I get my, my stuff out, but the park Avenue is not there. Dusty comes out and he's hot. And he said, come on, Timmy. He, and he throws me the keys. It's to a keys to a red two seater Mercedes. He said, Jimmy Crockett, he goes, I got him a new office car. He goes, we're taking it. And I was like, okay. So we get in the car. And all the way to Raleigh, Dusty was upset. You know, Barry and Mike had uh, hadn't shown up for interviews or something. And I, that's the day that they didn't show up, and it hit Dusty really hard. So we're at the matches in, in Raleigh, and he's trying to get everything set up. And you know, and, and Dusty loved Barry and Mike. You know, so it really it crushed him. You know? Was that? I don't mean to interrupt you, but was that when the U.S. Express was that when they 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 made the move to to Vince? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah that's when they did that. So I, I was with Dusty that night. So we're sitting there. I'd already worked twice or something. Showered up. We're in Raleigh at Dorton Arena, and Dusty says, "Yeah, you know, he was mad because he he's been waiting for negotiations on this contract for Crockett." And Crockett didn't have the contract for him to be the booker. You know, and it was a big money contract. From what I understand, it was like a quarter of a million a year guaranteed. I'm, I'm not for sure, but that's, you know, figures I've heard. Um, so anyway, uh, Dusty was, you know, down and, and he was hurt. Barry and Mike didn't show. Uh, uh, so he tells me, he goes, he goes, Femi, he goes, hey, baby, we'll go to the liquor store. Get us some silver bullets, a case of silver bullets, and uh, a fifth of wild turkey. 
was like, okay. You know, we usually drank the beer. We didn't usually, you know, we drank liquor in the bars and stuff. So I got the fifth of wild turkey and we're driving down the road and we're drinking the wild turkey out driving and we're drinking beer and wild turkey and the whole nine yards. Well, I finally, I got to pee. And back then, you know, you just pulled off on the side of the road, went around the other side of the car and peed in the ditch. You know, uh, so Dusty had been, you know, he's getting, he's having drinks. He's, he's getting mad. You know, Crockett didn't offer him the contract. He, you know, he didn't get the contract, blah, 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 this, that, and the other. And it's, and it goes, and it, then it got to F Jimmy Crockett. Sam pissed all over this off. He said, piss on this Mercedes. Piss on so it. We turn around and we start peeing all over this Mercedes. And we pee every time we had to stop, we peed all over the Mercedes. Peed, they were laughing and peeing all over the Mercedes. So I dropped him off at the hotel. I dropped the office car off. I get my uh, Buick <laughs> and I, I drive back home. So the nigga, I lived in Marshville, North Carolina at the time, Randy Travis's hometown. Things were tight, you know, with Crockett and then back then. And, and guys like me were only working one or two nights a week, which and we were only had a $50 minimum guaranteed. So we were starving. I was living with my grandmother and uh, and and Lester, her husband. Uh, he, oh, he was a cool dude. Anyway, I was living with them. So I made it home uh, and I go crash. The next morning, it's like, Eight o'clock in the morning, my grandmother comes in there and she goes, honey, Dusty Rhodes is on the phone. <laughs> and I was like, huh? And she goes, get up. Dusty's on the phone. He wants to talk to you. So I go over and I get the phone and Dusty goes, Sammy, baby. He goes, you got to get to the office now. Yeah, I said, Dusty, I, he said, baby, he goes, just get to the office. So I said, I'm 45 minutes an hour away, but I, I you know, I grab a cup of coffee and out the door I'm going, you know. So and when I pull up to the office on 421 Briar Bend, I, I pull up to the office at a side door. Dusty comes running out that side door and he throws me the keys to the Mercedes. And, and I look and I said, what do you need? And he goes, baby. He goes, I need you to take that down to Taco Bell. And there was a, a car chain, a cleaning chain called Auto Bell, but he, we called it Taco. He goes, you got to get the salmon knives. You got to get everything. You got to get a copper shampoo. You got. I said, what happened to Jimmy Crockett? <laughs> you know, we were having. He goes, Sam. He goes. They gave me my contract this morning. The red Mercedes is mine. It hurts. Oh, that's great, dude. So, so the night before, I peed all over. Oh, it was great. Yeah. Uh, I am well, so I'm glad I asked this question. That was a good question, man. Yeah, it was one night. Yeah, there was one night where, where Dusty and Blackjack uh, picked me up because Mike Davis and Mike Rotundo and Hector dropped me or left me on the side of the road. It was like 30 miles outside of Miami on the way back to Tampa. I was peeing and they left me there. So I was walking down the road. Only got 200 and something miles to walk, but, you know, lucked out. Here comes the main event. And they pulled over and gave me a ride back. You know, <laughs> But the drunker they got, the funnier they got, too. Do you think we could ride that mule? I don't know, but let's give it a shot. No. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> so so, so working with Dusty Rhodes, how did you get catapulted? You know, a pretty big storyline, uh, Dusty Rhodes versus the Four Horsemen. Uh, they, they, they singled you out because you were the young guy that he was kind of mentoring, and they end up breaking your – breaking your arm in a match like they did to Dusty. They broke his leg. They broke yeah. Dusty's leg, though, right? And, yeah, his leg, yeah. 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 Well, how, was that, how was that pitched to you? Well, it wasn't pitched. It just happened. Organic. You know? nothing, was, nothing was ever pitched to me like that, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it, it, the, it, it just happened. The fans, the fans as much as any, any mistakes, you know, happened. Uh, Dusty was wrestling Tully in a, a Bob Boy match in uh, Fayetteville, the box office was $6,000. 
And uh, uh, anyway, baby doll, that was baby doll just come in and she took off her little bracelet with the dog spikes on it and she throws it to Tully. So Tully hit Dusty. Well, it opened Dusty up. I ran down to the ring, you know, I'm a young kid. Dusty's my friend. Run down to the ring, see if Dusty's okay. And I get hit and ended up putting 27 stitches over my eye. When that happened, when, when it got dead silent. Now, I don't know if you've interviewed guys and they talk about that 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 quiet heat, that mm-hmm. white, hot, quiet heat. That's what it was. Uh, and uh, they they got me out of there. But you could have heard a pin. There are you know, 6,000, 6, you know, so there's probably – but 900 people there, uh, you could have heard a pin drop. And yeah. they had trouble. I mean, Arn and Oli had to come and make sure they got Tully and uh, Baby Doll back out. Anyway, they take me to the hospital, sewed me up. And then uh, the next morning, uh, Dusty calls me to the office and he says, hey, he goes, I want, I want to do an interview with you tonight. And I said, okay. And, uh, and he said, you know, he's, do you feel, do you want to work? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> you know, well, you know, the doctor told me drink plenty of liquids. Buzz Tyler got me, stopped and got me a case of beer. I drank that on the way home. He drove. So I had plenty of liquids. But that's back in my alcohol days, y'all. I got almost 13 years without a drink. So let me go Congratulations. Ahead. Congratulations. I mean, I got to a point where I was drinking one to three fifths a day every day for almost 19 years. Um you know, it, it ain't worth it. You know, and it's so easy to stop. All you got to do is not not pick it up. Anyway, uh, I forgot what I was talking about. Now we're talking about uh, the breaking the arm and the oh. and then the the, pro, the promo yeah, after the, the, the twenty seven stitches. So I get out there uh, and Dusty did the interview that you you know you had on there, and uh, I went to work with Buddy Landell when he went to open my head. Uh, in a TV match, Magnum Dusty hit the ring, boom. And then the next week in Fayetteville, they had me on top with Dusty and Magnum, you know. And the box, I remember pulling up to the building, Dusty said, baby, if this don't draw, he goes, your, your days at the top are over. <laughs> <And> <laughs> the Lord giveth and the Lord could take it away, right? <laughs> he gave me when I first started working. He said, baby, he goes, I'm the booker. And you spell Booker B O F A S. He goes, I got a little bitty pencil and a great big eraser. He goes, it takes a lot of hard work to get your initials wrote down in the book. He goes, and see it, baby, get your initials raced. Because he didn't write your whole name, he wrote your initials. But anyway, so we get to the end, he tells me, he goes, This was it. Well, we did $18,000 at the box office. And it seemed like the whole territory, everything just boom. And that's when we started. And, and, and I think the formula was right because, you know, um, uh, I was I was a white meat baby face. Yeah. You know, you, I mean, you got Magnum, it, like, you know, he's your Hercules. And then you got Dusty, your icon. You know, you can't, nobody's going to be able to get to them. But they can, yeah. you know, they got to me. Oh, I got beat up in park. <laughs> oh, the hell I went through. I, I bet, dude, which leads me leads me to the quote. One of the quote, main first questions I wanted to ask you was like, like what what is it, what does it take to make a good baby face? What's the formula? And then when you're thinking about that, how has that formula changed today? Oh wow. What oh Well, first of all, I think you need to have a passion. Uh, you need to believe in yourself. You need to stay humble. You know, um, you need to be able to acknowledge the fans, but the fans aren't your, the most important thing that's out there in the ring. Your opponent is. You can't forget your opponent over the fans. Um, without the humble humbleness, the, you know, it, it – it, it's when you go out there and, and you're you, you think your stuff don't stink. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. You, you, that's not you know that's not baby face material to me. Yeah, yeah. I I, I get what you're saying because yeah. back back then, like you said, it was the 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 baby faces. They knew when to turn the heat up 
where the uh, anger and aggression were focused on the on the opponent. Right now, you I mean, and, and, and you know, you don't have to be an alpha male to be a baby face, but um, if you are an alpha male and you're you're a baby face, you have to. It's a different confidence level. Uh, I'll say it that way instead of humble. I mean, you want to continue to be humble, but your self confidence, you know, is your shield basically. Right, if that makes sense. You know, absolutely. You know, you, know, you, you bring up a uh, a great name in the wrestling history, Magnum TA, a few moments ago, and I mean, full respect as I say this is Magnum TA the greatest what if when it comes to the professional wrestling business. Wow, I never, you know, all that potential and all that, yeah. Well, yeah, there, you know, there's a there's a couple of other, you know, yeah, Magnus definitely. There was Gino Hernandez, you know, that could have been a what if, what if moment too. Uh, well, look at my brother. What if you know uh, he'd have gotten his title shot or whatever, you know, his big run with you know with the strap up for Vince or whoever. Yeah. You know, he damn sure I, deserved it. You know, yeah. uh, I mean, well, I, I I just was uh, finding out. I never knew how much money uh, his contract was for. You know, when Watts nixed it. You know, wow. You know, I, I knew my brother was good and the best in the business, <laughs> but I didn't know that kind of dough was rolling around and you know people being able to grab up. Yeah. Yeah. I got. I kind of got an obscure question. You know, it's well deserved because, uh, you know, finally, if the guys are making it back, I'm glad they're making it back. You know, a lot of people say, "Oh, they couldn't have done what we did." Blah blah. blah. Well, yeah. Uh, and, and you know, Bart was reminding me of the, the other day. He said, "You know, they're making all this money." He said, "Well, we're the ones that paved the way." And I was like, "Yeah, I don't have a, I don't have any animosity towards that." You know, uh, promoters are, are well. Promoters are pieces. Well, you know, yeah, promoters yeah. are. Yeah. Let's all See, go. I, yeah. I think of it this way, and I, Robbie, I'll let you get to your question, but I want to piggyback on what you were saying, Sam, because you're dead right, uh, especially with the people from the past and comparing it to their business now. If it wasn't for so many of the legends and so many of the people who helped knock the trees down in the forest, there wouldn't be a way for the new generation to pave the asphalt for the roadway. Right, you know, and yeah, and, and here's what hurts me. Okay, the okay, these guys are making the big bucks, let's say. Um, but like off, uh, I, I've been down to the school at WXW when I was down in Florida a couple of years ago. And look, if you're gonna train, I mean, there's a there's some good training facilities out there. Office is one of them. Brad Lodi Kane is another one here in Matthews. I like to work out there. Uh, Ricky Morton's got a great school, uh, but uh, um, oh shoot, I forgot where I was going with that one. I'm sorry. You're uh, okay. Girl, sometimes. Uh, what was your question? What was, was your question? That was your question, Matt. Oh, it was my question. Oh shit. Oh god. <laughs> See, I'm in the same boat as you now, Sam. <laughs> yeah. I had a long trip. I drove. We drove 2,800 miles. Now, let me tell you guys, um, the way to do it, okay, is you do that whole trip. I drove all of it except the last two and a half hours. I let my wife catch that part in, you know, 2,800 miles. Because what you do is you get the work in there, and then you give the gravy to somebody else. Smart <laughs> man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, y'all haven't asked me about this thing, right? Oh, this. What do we got there? Oh, that looks like a United States championship belt there. Yes, sir. by all means. Yeah, I, I, I uh, recently won. Well, back in November, I won the uh, Premier Wrestling Alliance, uh, the the United States Heavyweight Championship. So I'm the proud possessor of that right now. It's going to take somebody an awful lot of hard work, and they better pack a lunch if they want to take it away. Uh, they're, they're just not taking it away. We already know. Still yeah. doing it, baby. Still doing well, it. You know, what's really cool is, you know, uh, and, and they have like a, a I guess a, a PWA has a, a Facebook uh, mm -hmm. page or whatever. And, and uh, before they'd had, you know, between two and 3,000, maybe 3,500 uh, subscribers. 
uh, in a week, it went from 2,500 subscribers to over 22,000. That's you know, amazing. So, I, you know, so somebody's interested. Oh, and then the other night in uh, Chillicothe, Ohio, I didn't know if you got to see any of the videos or anything. Uh, there was, uh, I guess, about uh, 4,500 people, maybe 5,000 people at the event in Chillicothe. And Bobby Fulton came up to me at WrestleCon. And he said, Sam, he said, he goes, it was all you. He said, you stole that. And I was like, well, I, you know, just doing my job. He said, like, it was all you. We, we can't wait to get you back. So I'm looking forward to going back out there, too. But what was the most touching thing? You know, after a match or something like that, you know, and the people, they give me accolades and stuff. I want them to give the accolades to him. The give them, give it, go, oh, please. Give it to the give it to the give it to the one that, that strengthens me. You know, give it to the one that lives through me. Give him all the glory because he's the one that makes me get up and want to be better every day than I was the day before. You know? Amen to that. And I agree a hundred percent. You know, I, yeah, I see people are hurting, and, you know, and you got to go through pain. I've been paralyzed twice. I've been dead a whole bunch of times. They keep resuscitating me. I, I, I go, you down, hey. Yeah, yeah. I, I died when I was 17. I, I, I drove a car off at 32 between two bridges, went straight down, landed uh, on the nose. The car wrapped up around me like an accordion. Took them two and a half hours to cut me out of the car. They had pronounced me dead at the scene at the uh, hospital. Boom, I come back. Man, uh, you don't, I've drank don't... myself to death a couple of times, you know, but I've been lucky enough to be able to get, you know, and, and it ain't worth it, y'all. Uh, there's so much out there, and you got to make the most out of every day, you know, and you got to move forward. Do a little bit more than what you did yesterday. You know, if you're if you're afflicted with if you've got some affliction and you can't move around well, just move around what you can today and a little bit more tomorrow and push yourself a little bit more, a little bit more. And you, it won't take long to see how far you can go. You know, absolutely. Well, let's fast forward in time a little bit. Let's go to 1988. A, okay. new, match, a new match concept called uh, the Royal Rumble is uh, pitched. To, to, I, I believe Pat Patterson invented the match, yep. right? Uh, I guess I don't yeah. know. You were one of the. You were one. Of, well, the well, though is about a roll, and we get there, and it's like every two minutes. And, yeah. and, uh, ooh, okay, okay. So now you're figuring out what number you are, and then how long you got to wait, and then how long you got before you, because they got it all mapped out. Yeah. I mean, exactly. it was something, you know, and it was it's it's kind of <laughs> cool for me. Because I was in the very first one. So, you know, in the next year or a few, if yeah. they keep having them, um, they'll eventually get around to me. And maybe I'll do something. Get, maybe I'll pull a swerve. Pull an Andre. No. Okay. There you go. Okay, now, that was the, the first. The, a lot of people, they don't know. A lot of people that newer fans, dude, they don't realize that like how they had the big four pay-per-views per year. But, but the Royal Rumble, that was um, – they actually had that first Royal Rumble. That was it. I don't even think that one was televised. It was televised, right? Yeah, it, it was, was televised. On, it yeah. wasn't on pay per view. It was the '89 one that was the first time it went to pay per view, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah it was on right. US. It was live right. on yeah, USA. First one was tele televised, but it wasn't. Yeah, it, I don't think it was a pay per view. Now I, I, I haven't like I haven't rewatched the match. I probably haven't seen that match since I watched it then uh but i i have this this image in my head of you having an interaction with uh harley race in the in that battle royal i you, probably did i don't know yeah. but i will tell you the harley race story on a oh, battle love it love one <clears throat> all right harley race when i was a little kid used to scare the snot out of me <laughs> all the time he jumped off a 15-foot ladder on my dad's throw when i was a little kid my dad wore a neck brace everywhere you know for all this time I was scared of Harley. Well, anyway, so now I'm wrestling, and <laughs> now Harley and I, I guess, are, are you know we're professional, blah blah blah. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> we're in Knoxville, Tennessee, and then we're having a battle roll. And back then, you know, you used to, eh, what number are you? Okay, I'll see you later. You know, and you go on to the next guy. Nail him. Okay, yo, what number are you? Okay, what number are you? So, anyway, 
Harley comes up to me and he goes, I'm standing in the corner because I learned a long time ago in a battle royal, the safest place to be is in the corner because people fall down on, you know, they don't, some guys, if they're green, they don't know. You don't take bumps in a battle royal because they'll fall on your knee you take a knee out or something. So Harley walks up to me in the corner and he goes, hey, kid. And I said, yeah. He goes, you know how to get somebody out of a battle royal when they don't want to go? And I said, no. And he reached down and he grabbed my testicles and he squeezed and twisted and I shot like a rocket. Woo! <laughs> Clean out of the ring. <laughs> you know, second row. Oh, and I was home first, and sitting back there looking at him, and he's standing in the corner going, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Harley was something else. Matt, oh, I, I was gonna. Okay, let's skip ahead. Like, let's go to let's go to eighty nine. Let's go okay. to WrestleMania. WrestleMania five, Trump Plaza. I've heard other interviews from guys that were uh, part of the roster during that time and a part of WrestleMania. You were in the, you were in a battle royal at WrestleMania, right? At WrestleMania four, uh, I was in, in WrestleMania five, yeah. I was uh, uh, wrestled Honky Talk Man. Right. So, so I wanted what I wanted to ask was like. I've heard other wrestlers say that Donald Trump really laid out the red carpet for the for the WWF guys. Oh, uh, he did. Yeah. Yeah. Did it you did. have any interactions with uh the Mr. President Trump? Oh no, I I mean I, I walked by, I saw him, and I shook hands. I mean, uh -huh. you know, I, I didn't bow down and kiss his ring or nothing like that. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Yeah, but were like nice sweets and like they laid out. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, we're top of the line, top, you know, yeah. and, and everything was laid out. Jake at WrestleMania four put his snake on Ivana. Yeah, uh, oh, you know, so you know, I was going to write him for a pardon while I was in prison. You just see it. Yeah, you might remember me. I'm the guy. Uh, hey. The, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm the guy. Who, uh, I'm the brother of the guy who put his snake on your wife at WrestleMania Four. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, I think he did a wonderful job. I don't know if anybody watches my stuff, but um, this country right now is is in is in a bad way. You know, oh, yeah. we need to smarten up. Uh, we need to get some common sense, you know. You need to uh, take I, take a shovel if you've got to dig through the corruption. But y'all, we already all know all the corruption. Everybody's filthy, you know, rich, blah 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 blah. Audit everybody in Congress. If you're getting rich insider trading, what uh, uh, Martha Stewart went down for a couple of years for that, right? So the yeah, Speaker yeah. of the House can get away with it. That don't make you know make sense. Anyway, I don't want to talk about politics, but yeah, right now our country's in, in need, you know. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And I hope somebody steps up to the plate, you know, for and uh regardless of that, the main thing I want to stress to everybody, I don't care who's in control, you need to have a personal relationship with your creator, you know, yeah. and you need to be on one on one with him because you know, the 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 thing I could wish for everybody is that everybody uh understand and come to know the messiah some people call him jesus christ i call him yeshua hamashiach which was his name in hebrew um i've done my studies i don't want to hear on judgment day depart from me i never knew you you know it says in the word it says uh people will come up and say i cast demons out on the day of judgment i cast demons out in your name and, and did all these good works, and he'll say, depart from me, I never knew you. Well, uh, that made me, you know, there's a couple of scriptures that make you want to kind of look things up, like seek and you shall find. Mm -hmm. Well, in prison and everything else, I did a, a, an extremely a big amount of, uh, of studying. I got three college credits through the American Bible Academy while I was in prison. So I, I didn't graduate high school. Uh, with my class or anything, I got a GED, but it, I didn't graduate high school, but I got three college credits. So that's kind of cool. You know, did you, did you find though, did you find, find your savior in jail in prison or, or were you already a believer? I found him in the uh, in the nineties, but here's the, here, here's the part with me. I've always been a believer. 
You know, and when I was 12 years old, I walked down the aisle and I gave my, gave, you know, gave my heart to Jesus. But I did that more for the, the donuts because they had Krispy Kreme donuts. And after you got saved, you get a donut, you know. Yeah, right. right. So, you didn't know what you were pledging. But later on in the mid nineties, I got saved when I was uh, 17. But in the mid 90s, uh, Brother Joe Patterson uh, in Whitesboro, Texas, uh, I, I was I was battling, I mean, going through some serious stuff, you know, inside here too, yeah. you know, because it's it's hard when uh, when all you've known is this business, and all of a sudden the lights aren't on you anymore, or just the different things. And and I was I was drinking a lot. I was my heart was troubled, a lot of stuff going on. And uh, I went over there, and Brother Joe led me to led me to the Christ that night, and. Um, I believed, however, I, I didn't live for him. I didn't live to honor him. I still did my thing, you know, uh, now, now I, I live to honor him. I, I, I want to make him happy. And if I can help somebody else, I get so much joy out of helping other people. I mean, it just makes my day because, you know, Everybody else in the world can say what they want to wrestle, blah, 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 you know, you know. But that one person, you touch their life today, you know. Right. You're gonna be the greatest thing in the world. Nobody's gonna ever be able to tarnish that, you know. Absolutely, man. You know, I I, I know we're gonna be starting to wind down here, and I want to ask you one more question before we tail this off here. Sure. As you've looked back from now through all the way to the beginning of your career. If there was one big piece of advice where you could have looked back and said, damn it, if you would have just did this, what would it have been? Oh, wow. If, to be honest, nobody ever asked that question. Um, but the big thing, if I could have quit drinking a long time ago, nothing would have stopped me. You know, I'm 58 years old. Oh, this was going to tell you about the, the other night in Chillicothe. I usually get a, get on the microphone after a match and 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 give honor give honor to the master. Um, and I ask the people to do the same thing. And uh, the other when I went to go start. I hadn't even started on the microphone yet, and the people started chanting, "You still got it," and it and it just kept getting louder and louder and louder, and that was just so overwhelming, overwhelmingly gratifying. I almost cried. I did. Well, I didn't cry in the ring, but I did. I think I did shed a tear on my way home. My wife and I were talking about it, and I was touched. It meant a lot to me. So. Norm, God, this is so weird not having Dad here to guide us. So this Seriously. is Robbie. It so is. So we always Good. we always wind the show down by letting our guests end up going full screen and say whatever they want if they want to promote any social media, any matches coming up, whatever message they want to talk about. And I know you and I and Robbie were talking off air about a specific message you wanted to talk about, but the next couple of moments, the floor is entirely yours, man. And I'm about, on behalf of myself and Robbie. It's been an absolute honor. We can't wait to have you back on again with us, my friend. Oh, yes, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. We always say this, but uh, and, and we always say it, but we always mean it, dude. Definitely going to have you come back for a part two if, it, if it's convenient for you at some point in time. Exactly. But, uh, but yeah, I'm going to give you the floor now here, bud. Okay, you going to put that link up for me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, thank you so much. Hey, uh, folks, I... You know, I, yeah, I've got stuff that I, I, I'd like to get out there and, and say to you. Uh, over the weekend, um, I got some really heartbreaking news. Um, a lot of the wrestling fans know that Wahoo McDaniels and I were real good friends and stuff for a long time. Well, I just met Nolan, his son, last year. Um, Karen, Wahoo's wife, uh, brought Nolan up to uh, the Fan Fest in Charlotte. And uh, I didn't know Nolan. I haven't known Nolan for a long time, but that instant I met him, I knew him and he knew me. Nolan had a gentle heart and a strong spirit. Uh, over the weekend, um, Nolan passed. Uh, 
you know, and it knocks a lot out of you. Uh, my, my deepest condolences are out to Karen and, and, and Zach. I love you guys. Uh, they set up uh, some friends of Karen set up um, a GoFundMe to help with Nolan's final uh, final oh God. his funeral expenses and stuff. You know, the need goes further than that though. So I ask, you know, that you give in memory of my friend Wahoo, in memory of my friend Nolan, um, and my friend Karen. Uh, if you've got it, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. If you can't, we understand. But I like to help people. And if, if I can touch one heart, help one, one soul, it's worth it. So if you can, thank you. That's yeah. awesome, man. That's that's super awesome. And we're gonna also post that that link, the, the GoFundMe link. We're gonna post it on, on our page too yep. when we post that. So you know for you those know, watching the YouTube show, the link's right at the bottom of the page right now here. Yeah. You it, know, it, finally final expenses, you know, you still have to go on from there, you know. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you can give, uh, you know, and and uh, whatever, we'll figure something out to help, you know. Awesome. I love you guys. Thank you so much for the opportunity. You guys oh, are aces. You, you call me anytime, okay? Awesome. It's an sir. absolute Thank honor, sir. And we brother. absolutely will. All right. Peace later. Out. Have a good night. All right. We did really good without dad. Do I who? Yeah, I think dad's fired. You know what, though? I want to be honest, though. Ni Mr. Nicholas is my security blanket. <laughs> I, need, yeah. I need him. Like, it's weird to incorporate Nick's thought process as I'm trying to incorporate my own weird-ass process. <laughs> he does a good job. He does it in yes. his role. His role with us. He yeah. Does, he, he his part is pivotal. So Nick, Nick's done is him. Nick. You are the best producer that we could ever have, and yeah. I give you a lot of shit. As Robbie knows, I give you so much shit off air, but I love you and I appreciate everything you do. And Robbie, kudos on booking Mr. Houston tonight because that was a fantastic show. Yeah. Uh, I. What do yeah. you have to say on it? Because I. I'm well, pleased as a peach right now. Yeah, I just you know there's a you know a lot of guys in this business that you know we reach out to and in most some of them are very cordial some ghost us uh Sam I've actually had talked to him before as just a fan and he was like soon as I messaged him he sent me a message right back and then when I asked him for the interview he got back to me within 10 minutes and he just really eager to you know that's a a person that appreciates their fans dude that'll be that quick to respond because like he just said he was in dallas he was doing a big wrestle con the guy if you watch him on social media he's always got something going on so he's not he's not idle you know so he's no he is yeah. not yeah so for Man. him to set his time aside for us dude is up awesome massive honor and like he was saying if you guys get the time check out the gofundme link at the bottom of the page here yeah. go help out wahoo's family if you can and, at, you know, even in death, life doesn't stop. Yeah. So we have to make sure that we keep continuing to help others, like he was saying. And let's keep trying to make the world a better place. And on that note, Robbie, oh, my God, I have to do this. I have to No, say no, this. we, we got we to gotta talk. We got to – you got to – I sent you a text message, which obviously – I can't mean. do it while I'm on air. Uh, well, I just need to. I just need our nickel kill me because he gave me specific instructions. Yes, to, yes, good call. Take that, take that over because I will shit the bed. Next week's show. Uh, next week we welcome uh, Dylan Hills of IWTV. Dylan will be breaking down the card for a Southern Underground Pro's New Direction event, and that'll be taking place on April seventeenth from uh, Dad's hometown of Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, everything you're going to want to know from. Uh, what the matches are, who the stars are, what the storylines are, all that's going to be covered. Um, this New Direction event, I, I should also point out, and we're proud sponsors of this, the Uncut Podcast. So uh, we hope you all join us and we can uh, talk to Dylan and find out all the goods on the event. So Thank cool. you, Robbie. <laughs> if it wouldn't have been, like, see, that's us thinking for Nick in this too. Yeah, because I have zero 
I can't check my can't or I can't check my messages while we're live. I so. don't either. I really don't <laughs> either sometimes. So I most of the time, 99% of the time I don't in case, unless it just keeps going off. Yeah, if I well, I have my stuff always set to do not disturb, or else it always will vibrate. So absolutely. God damn it. I don't want to do this. I, got it. Uh, but you got it. I know I have to. All right. Oh my god. For myself, Love Panda 24X40A on TikTok and Twitter and all your other social medias. For dad who is somewhere on assignment in Georgia or Turkey or Caicos or wherever the hell he is. I think he's in Nigeria. Yes. Yeah, so we're really popular in Nigeria. I don't understand why we're so popular in Nigeria. But anyways, back to the back to the job here. Oh, Christ. Robbie, how many fucking clicks is it? I'm going to have to do it like this. One and two. Oh, God. And then I really do the pose. Oh, God. I hate you so much. Ah, 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 ah.